The words you are hearing tonight are not ordinary words. That's why we're going into the engrafted word, the supernatural word, the word that is able to liberate you. With an open heart tonight, come with me and let's look at some problems and let's see the solution that was right inside the problem. So our case study is, number one, we will be looking at Adam. Now, I'm starting with Adam because somebody uh, listening to the broadcast sent a question that they do not, uh, you know, for us to expatiate more on uh, what we mean by when you are single, the solution to you finding a spouse is actually inside you. That how is that possible? You are single, you're looking for a spouse, looking for a married partner. How can the solution to you finding a spouse, a married partner, be also inside you when you're single? You know, that's what we want to look at. So, these are just principles from the Bible. So, what we do is we will go into the scriptures and draw out principles. Listen, the Bible says that all these things were written for our end samples. You know, these things are written so that we see the examples from the scriptures and from the same scripture, we can put to practice the principles, not exactly what you see in the Bible, but the principles of what happened in the Bible. The principles of what happened in the Bible. Okay, so come with us to Genesis chapter 2. Now, there was a problem in Genesis chapter 2, and I read from verse number 18. Genesis chapter 2 and verse number 18. So, if you have your Bible, just turn it now to Genesis chapter 2 and verse 18. So, come with me, Genesis chapter 2 verse 18 tonight right in genesis chapter 2 and verse 18 sorry i'm just kind of loading my bible here so that we can read these scriptures together okay my bible is coming up so i'll give you time to turn your pages of your own bible too in genesis chapter 2 verse 18 i can run the commentary but somehow, I would like us to read these scriptures together. Right? Genesis chapter number 2. Genesis is the first book in the Bible. And come with me to verse number 18. Now, I'll be reading from the English Standard Version. It makes the Bible easy to read in easy English. The Bible says here, Then, God, then the Lord said, the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. The man here was Adam. I will make a helper fit for him. In other words, I'll give him a spouse. Apologies again for the technical each. Um, okay. Genesis chapter 2. And verse 18 I will make him a help meet so that was the problem so what did God do the Bible says now out of the ground the Lord God had formed every beast of the field and every bird of the heavens and he brought them to the man to see what he will call them and whatever the man called every living creature that was his name the man gave name to all livestock and to the birds of the heavens and to every beast of the field for the Adam there was not found a helper fit for him the problem like we saw there was God was looking for a help meet for Adam so God brought animals the animals were brought from outside they were external so when they all came before Adam all Adam did was just give them names and the Bible said after that exercise in verse number 19 there was no helper. Verse 20, sorry. There was no help meet found for him. For Adam, no companion who corresponded to him was found, sadly. 
So, here was the problem. So what was the solution? Let's go. The Bible says, So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man, and while he slept, he took one of his ribs, closed up its, and closed up its place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man, he made into a woman and brought her to the man. Then the man said, This at last is the bone of my bones, the flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Look at that. The solution to the problem was not outside Adam. The solution to him finding a spouse was inside Adam. What is the principle we can draw here? You're watching this and you are single or you're in search of a spouse. Look at the principle. The principle we see here is naturally when you're searching for a spouse, you look outside. You're looking, you're seeking. Ah, uh, how tall is that one? Is that suitable for me? Is that man handsome enough? Is this, uh, is this the right height I want? Uh, is it light skin, dark skin, or you know, what sort of melanin <laughs> level is their skin pigmentation? Listen, that's the natural thing. But when you look at it, the way God found the solution was to look inside the man, inside Adam. What is the principle here? Before you look for a spouse, look inside. What are you like? Do you know yourself? Do you understand your desires, your unique desires? Do you understand your likes and dislikes? Do you understand your strengths and your weaknesses? When you look at what happened there, the moment the woman was taken out of the man, that meant the man had some weaknesses. There were some things missing in the man that the woman will come, the suitable help will come to kind of meet, fulfill. What are we talking about here? If you don't know what's missing in you, how would you really know what you need? That is the principle. So I meet a lot of people because I do quite a lot of counseling, relationships, marriage, and what they're looking for, they don't even know what they're looking for. They think they do. They don't know themselves. So they try to look for someone like themselves. Let me give an example. If you know you're loud, you're happy-go-lucky, you, you know, you're just the, 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 the life of the party. Listen, if you look for someone who's the life of the party like you, you are going to burn each other down. You are going to stress each other down. It's a matter of time. You allowed you, sorry I'm using the word loud, but you talk. You know you are a talker. Listen, <laughs> what you need is someone who will balance you. If you get somebody who is always talking, 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 like imagine two people married and then they're talking, 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 talking to each other. Because Mr. A does not know that what he needs is Mr. Mrs. B, not Mrs. A. Listen, look at the principle of the feet or even the hands. But the feet is what gives us balance. You've got a right feet, a right foot, and a left foot. A right foot and a left foot is what gives you the balance for you to walk. The right foot does not look like the left foot. If you have two right foot, you will still move, but your movement will be awkward. So look inwards. The solution to you finding your spouse is to first of all look inside you, understand yourself, know what's missing. When you know what's missing in you, then you will find, you'll be able to know what to find that is missing, that will complement you. And listen, it's not that, oh, you're old enough to get married. You're old enough, I, listen, you can be old enough and you're not, you're, you're not old enough to know who you are. Know yourself first before you know what. Because what is what you're going to marry. You mar I tell people you don't marry a who, you marry a what. You're not marrying an engineer, you're marrying a man. You're not marrying a doctor, 
you're marrying a woman you're marrying a what it's their character that you're marrying not their profession so that's the principle of adam finding a suitable help so let's move on to abraham um, tonight the principle we'll be sharing for abraham identifying the solution in the problem now in genesis and chapter 12 let's go to genesis and chapter 12 it's a bible study so let's enjoy this but if you still do not understand we're coming back at the end of the month for question and answers but don't wait till the end of the month like the you know the very wise student and wise uh, person who contacted us and asked that question about what they heard on sunday and they, they were wondering uh, you know how can somebody be single and the solution to finding the spouses within them so that's just the principle from there so don't wait till end of the the last thursday of the month when we do question and answers you can always contact us we will address it subsequently in all the meetings so let's move to abram in Genesis chapter 12, right, God told Abraham he was going to bless him. Clearly, if you read Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 to 3, now the Lord said to Abraham, go from, get out of your country, get out of your kindred, from your kindred, that's family, and get out from your father's house to the land that I will show you. Verse 2, Genesis 12, and I will make you a great nation. I will make of you a great nation. I will bless you, make your name great, uh, so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. And him who dishonors you, I will curse. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Now, that was God's promise to Abraham God gave him an instruction listen get out of your country get out of your kindred get out of your father's house country kindred father's house that's family get out God told him three levels separate from your father's house your kindred sorry country kindred and your father's house because I want to bless you before the blessing I want you to separate that's principle number one follow that closely God was specific otherwise God could have blessed Abraham right in his nation where he was in his father's house right in that community among his own people God could have but this is a principle, separation. There are some things you have to separate from to enjoy God's blessings in its fullness. That is the first principle right there. Otherwise, there will be a problem. And what was the problem? If you read verse 4, you will see the problem and how it became a problem. <laughs> and what was that problem? Verse 4, the Bible says, So Abraham went. He departed just as the Lord told him and Lot went with him. Abraham was 75 years old and he departed from Haran. Look at that. He was 75 years old. That tells me something. God can bless you anytime at any age. You're watching this and you're saying it's too late. God is never too late. Oh, I'm old. Forget it. I've listened to motivational speakers. They try to tell us realities that are done in on us. They tell you from age this to age that. That's when you can do this. Age this to age that. That's when you can achieve this. Age that to this. And when you're uh, be beyond 60, you know, it's too late. That's when you're meant to, you know, be doing this and uh, reaping what you... Listen, with God, when you give your life to God, you are like a newborn baby. Old things are passed away. You start all over again. And listen, I'm encouraging somebody here, you can actually have a new slate and start all over again. You can come to God. The Bible says, when you give your heart to the Lord, you become a new creature, a new creation in Christ Jesus. All things are passed away, all things have become new. You become like a newborn baby. 
God can start all over again with you. 75 years old Abraham was, he was called Abram at this point. So what is the principle? Abraham took Lot with him. But then, if you get to Genesis chapter 13, from verse 7 to 11, there was a problem, big problem, because Abraham started moving, he obeyed God. But if you read that Genesis chapter 12, you know, because of time, I would just say, go read it. You will see that, yeah, he was moving just as God spoke to him. But you can spot the difference. He took Lot with him. God said, get out of your country. Get out of your kindred. Separate from your father's house. But he took Lot. Who was Lot? Lot was his nephew. He had good reasons to take Lot. He could argue. Because prior to this time, Lot's father, who was Abraham's brother, had died. So this was his nephew. So, you know, let me look after my nephew. And he took it with him. Took, took him with, with him. But God said, you ought to separate from everybody. You see, one of the things you have to learn if you want to obey God, separate yourself from feelings. Separate yourself from sentiments. Family sentiments. Feelings and faith, they both start with the letter F, but feelings and faith don't go together. Faith is obedience. You don't feel to obey. Oh, I feel like I don't feel like. No, God's word is not subject to feelings. God's word works by faith not by feelings. Oh, when I feel it, I will do it. When I feel like, I will give. When I feel like, I will be a blessing to people. When I feel like, I will give one-tenth of my income. When I feel like, <laughs> I will... Listen. Feelings and faith don't go hand in hand. Faith don't work by feelings. Faith works by obeying the word of God acting of what God tells you irrespective of how you feel. Feelings! He took Lot with him. Lot later became a problem. You know, when he was going, you will see he encountered problems. He went to Egypt. There was a famine. He left Egypt. He went on. He had to lie. He did so many things. And then when we get to Genesis chapter 13, remember we're learning principles. The solution isn't the problem. So the problem here now was God wanted to bless him but he was hmm, not enjoying the fullness of the blessings. Why? Because there was a problem. The problem was with him. The problem was in the form of his nephew, Lot, that he must have taken out of sentiments. You see, partial obedience is equal to disobedience. When God gives an instruction, you obey to the letter. All right? So in Genesis chapter 13, from verse 7 to 11, you will see now, Abraham had, was able to acquire things. Lot, who was with him, his nephew, too, acquired. Now there was a problem. They started fighting. The herdsmen of Lot and the herdsmen of Abraham started fighting. So, you know what happened? His uncle, Abraham, finally said, There's no need. Let's not fight, Lot. Look at the land. It's big enough. If you go south, I will go north. If you go east, I will go west. Whichever way you go, I'll go in the opposite direction. Choose. The Bible said they separated at that point. Lot chose in verse 11 the Jordan Valley. He journeyed and he went east. The Bible said they separated verse 11, Genesis 7 from one another. That was the problem the solution was the problem that Lot brought until they separated. So the problem was Lot. Maybe you have a lot that you are holding on to. Maybe there's a lot of problems you encounter. It might be because you have not separated from Lot. 
I pray God will open your eyes to see the lot of the lots of lot that you are still holding on to and you are not enjoying the blessings. The Bible now says in verse 12, you know, the, the funny thing was, <laughs> God now says, sorry, that Genesis chapter 13, the Bible now says in, uh, I think it's verse number, um, let me just check, verse number 14, see what happened <laughs> after Lot separated from Abraham. The Bible says, the Lord said to Abraham, after Lot had separated from him. When you look from that Genesis 12 up to this verse 13, we didn't see any record really of Lord, uh, Abraham and, uh, and the Lord speaking to Abraham. God had spoken to him once, separate. Father's house, kindred, country. He took Lot. So we will see and notice that there was really no conversation between God and Abraham up till now. But God now came after Lot separated, after the final complete obedience. The Bible says, then the Lord said to Abraham, after Lord had separated from him, lift up your eyes from where you are, northward, southward, eastward, westward, verse 15, for all the land you see, I will give to you and to your offspring forever. I will make your offspring as the dust of the earth, so that if one count the dust of the earth, your offspring shall also be counted. Arise, walk through the land, length, breadth of the land, for I will give it to you. After Lot separated. So, the problem you have might be because there's a lot right inside. Sorry again, I understand that <laughs> we lost the, the transmission again. There are some lots. Just look at the problem you're going through currently. Just look at the problem. And I pray God will open your eyes to see the things, feelings first you need to separate from and the physical lots you need to separate from. So that's the principle of identifying the solution that is in right there in the problem. So after the final separation in Genesis chapter 13 verse 14, God blessed Abraham. The last one we're going to look at, if time permits us tonight, is the promise that God made this time now to Abraham and his wife Sarah. Remember, he was 75 years old when he departed. They were now old. God comes to them in Genesis chapter 15 and engages them in a conversation. The Bible says, After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision. Fear not, Abraham, I'm your shield, your reward. Your reward shall be very great. And then verse 2, Abraham protested. Listen, you can have a conversation with God. You can literally talk to God like you will talk to a friend. God is your daddy. Listen. I know some of us may not have good relationship or might be enjoying a good relationship with our parents or maybe even your earthly father might be late and that's somehow informed the way you relate with God. No, God is good. He is a good, good father. That is who he is. I love that song. Listen, God is your daddy. You can talk to your daddy. Abraham in verse 2, Genesis 15. The Bible says, Abraham said, Oh Lord God, what will you give me? I continue to be childless. And the hair of my house is this Eliezer of Damascus. And Abraham said, You have not given me no offspring. And a member of my household now will be my heir. And behold, verse 4, the word of the Lord came to him. This man shall not be your heir. So it's not the guy that you're bringing, one of the sons of your servants, that's going to take over. No, I promised you to give you a child. And then the Bible said, God now brought him outside and said, look heavenward. 
Look at the number of the stars. If you are able to number them, then it, he said to him, so shall your offspring be. The Bible said, Abraham believed the Lord and God counted to him as righteousness. Remember Romans chapter 10, verse 8. With the heart, we believe. With the mouth, confession is made. You have to believe in the impossible. You have to believe in God's promises. Over and above, remember what we said, feelings. You get to a point where you separate your feelings. Are we saying you should ignore facts? No. Faith does not ignore facts. Faith acknowledges the fact, but speaks the truth of the word of God to the fact. Abraham at this point was childless, but God spoke to him, I will give you a child. And that child is right inside you. I am giving you a child from your body. And when you look at the conversations later, God actually specifically came and told him, no, it's your wife, Sarah. The same Sarah is going to deliver. He's going to give birth to a son. The same Sarah. <laughs> the problem, childlessness. The solution was right inside them. So this is the home run and we close here tonight. How did God eventually bless them? God had to do three things. Genesis 15 verse 1 to 4. The scriptures are here. I want to go and read them. Because of our time, I have to round up. Genesis chapter 15 verse 1 to 4. What did God do? The Bible said God took him outside and gave him the vision. God changed his vision. God showed him. You know in verse 4, the Bible says, God told him, the child will come from your own bowels and God now took him out in verse 5 and said look towards the heaven and look at the stars in other words stop looking at your circumstances look up to heaven look up to heaven look up to the one who has promised you that's the principle if you keep looking around you you will be frustrated but if you look up to the heaven God changed his vision see can you number the stars? If you can, that's how much I have blessed you. That's how many children I've given you. Today, the Bible says we are all children of faith. Those of us in faith, we are all children of Abraham by faith. The first thing, God changed his vision. Genesis chapter 15 verse 18. What was the next thing God did? God changed his mindset. In Genesis chapter 18, God made a covenant with Abraham and God told him I will make a covenant with you and to your offspring I will give this land. At this point there was no child. So God changed his mindset. God cut a covenant with him. God made an agreement with him. A covenant. That's sorry. The first thing is vision. The second thing is covenant. Go into a covenant with God. Go into an agreement with God. The Bible says two cannot walk except they be agreed. You agree. Change your vision. Look upwards. Look to heaven. Change your... Uh, make a covenant. Enter into a covenant with God. God, I agree. I choose to believe whatever you are saying. The third thing God did was to change his mind. Their mindset. Sorry. So the first thing is vision. Change your vision. God gave him a vision. God gave, entered into a covenant, agreement. The agreement is between the higher and the weaker, the mighty and the less, you know? So God is more powerful than you. So submit your weaknesses to him. Submit your doubts to him. Let his faith now become your faith. So that's number two. Change of vision, new vision, new covenant, and then in verse 17 what did god do god changed their mindset let's go to genesis chapter 17 as we close begin to close if you look at verse 1 the bible says abraham was 99 years old remember when god first promised 75 that's some time 
But between that time, 75 and 99, God changed his vision, went in an agreement, a covenant with him. And then the mindset here we see here is, God said to him, I am almighty God. Walk before me. Be blameless. And I will make my covenant between me and you and will multiply you exceedingly. Look at that. Vision, covenant. So what mindset? Can you see how almighty, how powerful I am? Now, verse 15. Do you know what happened in verse 15? The Bible said, God now changed their names. That's the ultimate mindset. God said to Abraham, as for Sarai, your wife, you will not call her Sarai anymore. Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. God told Abraham himself that he was changing his name from Abram to Abraham. Change of mindset. Abram meant high father. Just symbolic of the father, high, but no children. Pride. Childlessness. You're called the father, but you have no offspring. A high father. So God changed his name from Abram, Abraham, father of many nations. Start calling yourself the father of your children. Start calling yourself the mother of your children. Vision, covenant, mindset. And God changed the name of Sarai. Sarai means contention. Change it to Sarah. Time won't permit us. But that's how far we'll go tonight. When you look at Genesis 21 verse 1 to 8, the promise was fulfilled. Sarah gave birth to Isaac. Laughter. I prophesy to you, you will laugh. You will laugh last. Those who are mocking you now, they will come. You wouldn't mock them, but you will laugh and they will come and laugh with you. You know laughter? There are some laughters, laughter of joy, where tears also will flow. So that is the principle. The solution to Abraham Sarah's problem was right within them. Vision, covenant, mindset, and you will give birth to God's promises. Let us pray. Father, thank you tonight. In spite of all the technicalities, you still made this possible that people will stay on and watch this broadcast. In spite of the problems with the internet. <laughs> so Lord, the little we have been able to share, I pray, multiply it. I pray, clarify it. I pray, make your word so simple instruct, direct, show every one of us what we need to do. Blessed be your name forevermore. I pray for that person that is looking for that spouse, that they will find that spouse right within them. I pray for everyone that you've changed their vision, that have entered into a covenant with you, and you've given them a new mindset to let them know that with you, nothing is impossible. To you be all the glory. Great things you have done tonight. In Jesus' name.